So we are now joined by Satish Reddy, the MD and CEO of Dr. Reddy Labs. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Reddy. Uh, we're going to be discussing the Q4 earnings are just out. Uh, Mr. Reddy, first question, really, the margins of the company, uh, you know, on an adjusted basis have disappointed uh, severely and has come in below the 20% mark. What are the main reasons uh, for the fall in margins, according to you? So I think you're looking at the profit after tax margins, you know, and then trying to compare the previous quarter with this quarter. Maybe that's that's the reason why you're saying this. But uh, I think see, you have to understand the two, three things here. See, last year we had olanzapine. Uh, I mean, last quarter we had olanzapine, which, you know, was an exclusive product. It had a significant portion of the sales. So against that, you would find something uh, different. Right. So but if you take just the Q4, it in fact has done very well. And if you see the overall margins for the year, it actually has improved a percentage point. Right. So and the other part of it uh, for the adjusted part of it would be because of the impairment charge uh, that we had uh, taken, uh, which also contributed a portion of it. That's that's probably why you're seeing it. But overall, if you actually see the margins have actually done uh, done better. Right. Can you give us more uh, details of this impairment loss on uh, on uh, intangibles? Yes, yeah, so this has relation to, you know, what uh, happens in Germany, uh, you know, because this is a market faced with severe price erosions because of the tender-based price model. That's, that's the main uh, part of it. So what triggered an impa impairment? Because it's almost three years since we had the last one, which was a substantial chunk. So compared to that, this is somewhat marginal, right, compared to the big write-offs that we had a uh, long time back, uh, you know, the, the, the accounting charge. This time what has happened was the trigger was this continued pricing pressures, one, the second one being also one of the major insurance funds uh, also moving to the tender route. It, it, it is in fact was the last of the major insurance funds which moved into this route which triggered this impairment charge. Right. Uh, Mr. Reddy, if you can also throw some light on the performance of uh, Zyprexa and Giordan in Q4 and how much they have contributed to the top line and bottom line. So Zyprexa generic was not much because Q3 had the big advantage of that. Right, so the, the the Q4 wasn't much. It is in fact just about two million dollars. But that's the net part of it, in the sense that they were sales, but uh, because of what we do as something called stock shelf adjustment, right? So if you put all that, the net was much lower than you know uh, what it was in the previous quarter. The other part, which is uh, Ziprazidone, I can't give you a specific uh, uh, you know amount of sales that we have done because it's just been launched. Uh, but that that was a good contributor to uh, Q4 in terms of margins. Yes. Right. What kind of growth has the company clocked in the United States, uh, you know, Russian and Indian markets uh, in this quarter? So as far as the U.S. Uh, is concerned, overall for the year we had done about uh, $670 million. Uh, that was uh, what we had clocked for the entire year. And then for uh, Russia, it was $230 million. Right. Uh, you know, what is the FTF pipeline and uh, which are the new... Uh, you know, ANDAs uh, that the company has filed, any of them, uh, you know, uh, uh, are para five or para four? So uh, I won't be able to talk about the specific uh, pipeline in terms of names and everything else, uh, you know, because of the competitive reasons. But just to give you an idea, uh, in terms of the first to file, there are almost about uh, seven first to files in our pipeline, which will unfold over the next uh, few years, including this year. Uh, but just also to assure you that, you know, we have a very strong pipeline, a very prolific year of launches uh, for the U.S. market, uh, you know, based on some of the first two files which were already settled earlier and then will be launched, and also the limited competition products plus the third factor, which is taking a larger market share of the existing products. All the three factors put together, I think we expect a good growth in the uh, North American market. Uh, Mr. Reddy, correct me if I'm wrong, but Russia is a very big market for the company and Russia along with uh, CIS contribute close to 15% of the total business for the company. What kind of growth and new product launches can we expect in the company uh, in Russia particularly? So it's not particularly new products that drive the growth in terms of launches, right? Because this is a branded market, so branded, any brand which will take almost like two, three years uh, before it can contribute, uh, you know, a sizable amount of uh, sales. But what is driving the Russian growth are a couple of factors. One is the product uh, portfolio that's already in the market, which is, you know, has still significant potential uh, to grow. Brands like Nice, brands, brands like Omaze, uh, which still continue to drive the growth, uh, number one. Other thing is also the products which were launched recently. Uh, products like uh, Senade, which we had licensed from Cipla, that's, that's added to the sales uh, this year. 
Uh, also products that we had uh, out licensed, uh, that we have in licensed from uh, some multinational companies like Novartis, uh, some of the tail end brands, they have also been launched uh, and they will contribute to the sales this year. And the th other reason is really the OTC market because we had invested significantly in terms of uh, marketing spend and now OTC has uh, contrib is almost contributing 30% of the sales in Russia. Right. Uh, Mr. Reddy, one last question. The street feels that branded generics in India and Russia face competitive headwinds and that the growth in Europe uh, you know, will remain tepid. Uh, so visibility beyond uh, FY14 is low in the US. Is that a concern that you would agree with? I wouldn't agree with that uh, assessment uh, in the sense that, of course, because of the, you know, the, uh, the launches in terms of big products going off patent, uh, you know, in all these years, especially the last uh, two years, FI12 as well as what you're seeing this year, that's where you would see significant drivers for growth in the U.S. market. And also there's a patent cliff coming after that. So that's, that's just one portion of it, right? So if you see FI14, for example, Things may taper a little bit in the U.S., but that doesn't mean that there won't be any growth. There will be growth from limited competition products. There is this OTC segment in the U.S., uh, which has a growth. So overall, you know, you won't expect the kind of growth that you have seen, say, in FI12 and FI13. That's that's one factor. Uh, as far as India and uh, Russia are concerned, uh, these markets will continue to grow. Uh, like I said, OTC drives uh, the Russian market growth plus new products which have already been launched. And as far as India is concerned, I still believe there are. Uh, uh, you know, very good uh, growth rates are possible. Yes, competition is there, but even the opportunities are equally there in the market to grow. Guidance for FY14? So, as a company, we don't give guidance, right? So, as far as FY13 is concerned also, I think we still expect uh, gro good uh, growth rates on the back of uh, new product launches, especially in the U.S. market and also continued Russia and India growth. We still expect a good uh, growth, growth for the FY13, yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Reddy, for joining us on ET Now.